We now move on to discussing precipitation reactions. You see, a reaction like this one right here is called a metathesis or an exchange reaction. Now, as you can see, the reactants swap partners. Let me explain what I'm talking about. In this kind of reaction, A is supposed to represent a cation and B an anion. C is supposed to represent a different cation and D a different anion. As you scan this reaction equation, you'll note that what's happening is this. A is swapping partners with C. So A and D are getting together and C and B are getting together. So this type of reaction is once again called a metathesis or exchange reaction. It really is a partner swap. A is dancing with B, C is dancing with D, and now they switch. Reactions like this are also called precipitation reactions if one or both of the products, AD and CB in this case, are insoluble in water. Now, if both products are soluble in water, that is no precipitate forms, which we would determine using the table from the previous slide, then we write no reaction, which means no precipitate forms. Let's take a look at a problem. Will precipitation occur when the following solutions are mixed? If so, write a balanced chemical equation for the reaction. Now, in typical Mike style, I am not going to show you the answers to all of these. I will, however, do one and let you tackle the rest on your own. I decided to choose example A. Sodium carbonate reacting with silver nitrate. Step one is do your partner swap. Remember, in our partner swap, we look at cation A and get him together with anion D. We then get cation C together with anion B and write out the products that are formed. Here's our example. I've got sodium carbonate reacting with silver nitrate. That was given to me in the problem. Sodium is the cation A in this example, and nitrate, NO3, is the anion D. So I'm going to get sodium and nitrate together like this. Silver is our cation C in this example. Carbonate, CO3, is the anion B. Hence, silver and carbonate are going to get together to form silver carbonate. Now, one thing that confuses students quite often is why we select the subscripts that we do. In fact, this, this confuses students all the time. Here's what I'm going to tell you. Polyatomic ions like carbonate, CO3, and nitrate, NO3, always, always, always just have the subscripts that they have. I required you, my students, to have memorized these polyatomic formulas and their charges in an earlier chapter. But what about subscripts like this 2 next to the sodium or this 2 next to the silver? Where in the world do we come up with those? Well, the way we come up with those is by looking at the individual charges of the ions. You'll note that sodium is found in column 1 of the periodic table. What kind of charge is it going to have when it becomes an ion. Well, it wants to feel like the closest noble gas, so it's going to lose a single electron to move one position to the left. Hence, sodium will have a plus one charge. Carbonate, CO3, you should have memorized from our earlier chapter, has a charge of minus two. Now, what about the silver nitrate? This might be kind of confusing. You might have no clue what charge silver has because it appears somewhere in the D block of the periodic table. But nitrate NO3 is a polyatomic anion whose structure and charge I required you to memorize in an earlier chapter. Nitrate NO3, you might remember, has a charge of negative 1. So what does that mean about silver? Well, in order to balance out a charge of negative 1, what charge does silver have to have? Well, it has to have a plus 1. Do you follow me so far? So these are the charges of each of these individual components in these ionic compounds. Those charges do not and cannot change in this type of reaction going from the left side of the equation to the right. With that in mind then, we know that my sodium is going to have a plus one charge. It has a plus one charge on the left, it has to have a plus one charge on the right. 
What charge does nitrate have? Well, we memorized and also showed right here that it has a minus one charge. Hence, how many plus one charged sodiums does it require to balance out a single minus one nitrate? Of course, it's one. So the subscript next to the sodium is one, which we don't write. Over here, however, we've got silver getting together with carbonate. The silver's charge does not change. It was plus one over here on the left side of the equation. It's still plus one over here. But what about the carbonate's charge? Well, its charge also doesn't change. It was minus two before. It's still minus two over here. Now, how many plus one charged silver ions do we have to have present to balance out a negative two charged carbonate ion? You guessed it, two. Hence, we have to add the subscript two next to the silver so that this will balance out. Make sense? Good, we've now finished with step one. Step two says we have to now determine if any of the products are insoluble in water. If any of them are, then we write the letter S next to them. For any that aren't, we write the letters AQ next to them. So here's our equation so far. Now I know you're probably looking at it and thinking, this equation isn't balanced. I know it's not balanced. We'll take care of that in a later step. For now, we're going to do step two, which is figure out which, if any, of the products are insoluble in water. So we're going to look, first of all, at sodium nitrate. Do we see nitrate appearing anywhere in this table? It appears right here. You'll note that it says that all nitrate-containing ionic compounds are soluble in water, and there are no exceptions. Hence, sodium nitrate will totally be soluble in water, and we will write the letters AQ next to it. Now what about the silver carbonate? Do we see carbonate anywhere? We do, it's down here on the lower half of the table. Notice that it says that all ionic compounds containing carbonate are insoluble in water, except for ammonium carbonate and any carbonate that has a metal from group one of the periodic table. Is silver any of those? It is not, hence silver carbonate shown here is insoluble in water and we will write the letter S next to it. S, of course, stands for the word solid. We now finish step two by writing these individual letters next to each of these species. The guys on the left are all soluble in water. Sodium nitrate on the right is soluble in water. And hence, these guys all have the letters AQ written next to them, which is short for aqueous. Silver carbonate, however, is insoluble in water. It's a solid when you throw it into water and hence will form a solid precipitate. As a result, we write the letter S next to it. Now we move on to step three, which says balance the equation. Now I trust from your practice up to here from our previous chapter that you have the ability to do that by adding the proper coefficients. I'll go ahead and do that now. Step four says that if all of the products are soluble in water, then no reaction will occur and we write no reaction. In this particular case, we do have one of the products, silver carbonate, that is insoluble in water. Hence, step four does not apply. We have now completed this problem. Here are the remaining problems, B, C, and D. I'm not going to do them for you, but we'll let you attempt them on your own. Now this provides the perfect background necessary for you guys to understand the following joke. Our chemistry cat of the day from quickmeme.com. If you're not part of the solution, then you're part of the precipitate. <laughs> yeah.